think Mark primed the pump on that one. <laughs> Amen. I've, I've, I've heard that song and I've sung that song so many times in my life. And I went to a funeral um, six or seven, eight weeks ago and that was sung at the funeral. And I was just absolutely blown away. And uh, choir, I think you topped it. Bless you. And um, more people can actually sing in the choir. We, we, amen. Y'all want me to start calling out names? <laughs> if uh, it, it's good, we uh, thank you for those who sing in the choir, and we could all, especially the men. And I, I might give an invitation here in a second, Mark. Choir practice is when Wednesday night. Wednesday night, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, amen. Um, take your Bibles and turn to Hebrews 11. I'm starting a new series today. I've been praying about this. When I first came to be your pastor, I just wanted to, to idle a little while and just kind of see what it was that God was going to be saying. But uh, probably about five or six weeks ago, I knew that I was going to be headed in this direction. And uh, I'm going to be uh, probably for the next 10 Sundays following we're going to be talking about what it means to be a God pleaser to please God would y'all like to please God do you believe that you can I was a little weaker do you believe that God wants you to amen and I know that you can and it's simply a matter of uh, learning what that means and then just applying what it means just uh, letting be God be God in our lives and I'm looking so forward to that um, I'm not going to be preaching Hebrews 11 for the next 10 weeks. I've done that before. I've taken the what we call Hebrews 11, the Heaven's Hall of Fame. We start seeing all the, the great uh, people that God used and how he used them in a great way. But the theme of Hebrews 11 is what we're going to be talking about. And it's going to be people of faith. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. Today's just going to be kind of a, an introduction to what it means to be a person that God says puts a smile on his face. A, one who walks by faith and not by sight. And we're going to be looking at many different instances, New Testament and Old Testament, where we're going to see people who actually were living out things called faith. So um, I'm going to be using four different scriptures today. Because of that, I'm not going to ask you to stand right now, but I am going to pray that God will add what he would like to do in the next few moments, that God would just be with us and, and do a mighty work. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Sir, I love you, and I thank you for New Holland Baptist Church. I thank you for letting us be in this place on this day. Lord, we do pray for those, because there are many that we know would not be here. They're traveling and doing other things, and from handbell choirs to Virginia to Alabama. I know all over Florida, I know that there's many different people in many different places. But, Lord, we're all your church. And Father, I pray as you have led me to this series, and it's all going to be your word, that you will amen your word. Lord, that you will challenge us on the areas in our life that where we need uh, more of you and less of us. We need to learn what your scripture means to us. Because we know it's your word, we know that it's good for us, we know that it's infallible. We know, Lord, it's, it's God-breathed. Jesus, when you preached, you preached your word. So uh, I, I'm grateful for that, and I know that this is what you would have us to do. But, Lord, if, if you don't send the Spirit to preach it in us, if we don't learn not just simply the message, but, Lord, we don't understand the intent and have a desire to live it, then all is vain. So, Lord, uh, begin even today. Speak personally to us. Lord, uh, I'm looking for you to do a mighty work, a God work, a new Holland work. Do it in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. In Hebrews 11, in verse number 5, it says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found. He basically was born, lived his life. Then there was a day that uh, God just took him to heaven. It says that uh, he was not found because God had taken him. And then here's the reason. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. 
what a wonderful thing to be said about someone. I've preached many people's funerals, but I've never preached anybody's home going in that way. But when, when you preach someone's funeral, you, you, you say basically who they are in God and what God has done in their life. That's really uh, what our testimony of our life is. Now, I can tell you my testimony. That is, I can tell you what God has said to me and what God's done in my life. But it is so much more wonderful if somebody else comes and, and, and tells that testimony. But even greater, how great it would be that God himself would say, this is his testimony. This is somebody that pleased me. Now, look at it in verse 5. Tell me what he did. I mean, Abraham walked with God. Abel brought a sacrifice. Abraham obeyed and left his country. Abraham took his son up on the mountain. Uh, Noah, uh, Noah built an ark. I mean, we can go through all the examples there, but really, when we look in the life of Enoch, it was simply who he was to God and who God was to him. That's relationship. And that includes me too. I can do that. I, I, I have known Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior since I was 10 years old. I asked him to come into my heart. Wisest thing I ever did. I knew that he was God. I knew that he loved me. I knew that the word said that I could have a relationship. And I did, and I trusted him, and I asked him to come into my life. And from that day forward, I've been different. I've been saved. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's, that is, I called out and he heard. And he wanted it. And then I wanted it, and we became one. But what I've done with my salvation, I haven't always walked with him. I've known more of this book than I've lived. Y'all hear me? I, I, I've known a lot of facts. I've known a lot of stories. I could tell you the people. I, I, I could tell you what I could tell you the good they did, and I, I've, I've read it enough where I could tell you the bad that they did. But but here's the point. So what? And I'm not trying to be rude, but a lot of people come to the place of knowing that they need God in their life, knowing that Jesus is the God who left heaven to die on the cross to save us from our sins. And, and maybe, yes, they came to that place and they said, because the Holy Spirit has drawn me, I, I know I need this in my life, and I'll give my heart and life to him. But, but listen, salvation is more than that. And, and we must, he, I've never seen him, but I know him. I've never heard an audible voice, but I've heard him speak. And I've seen the truths of his word become alive. And I've been challenged. I've been challenged to get out of my comfort zone because most of us, that's where we run to is our comfort zone. And we come to this place where we're saying, if he's God, and he is, then I need him in my life. And, and if he's God, and he is, then I need him to be alive in my life. And if I'm in this world and it's tough, which it is, then I need God to be actively involved and working in my life. I am looking for Christ in me, the hope of glory. I am looking for, for God to be God. I am looking for, for not just a talk, but a walk. I am looking as God says, here it is laid before you. Will you believe me? Will you trust me? And then to see us say, yes, Lord. Though I don't understand, I still will obey. I still will follow. So what we know about Enoch was he had been called into this relationship and, and he walked with God. And when God led him this, this way, he went that way. When God led him this way, he went this way. When God said go, he went. When God said stop, he stopped. When God said do, he did. And that's the same challenge that's before us. If you're, come on now, religion brings you to this place, well, amen. But will your walk lead you when you leave? When, when it's pretty easy in here, isn't it? Now, I know in America it's getting rougher because people are coming in with guns and shooting in churches, and I, I understand that. I understand that. 
but for the most part, we got it pretty good, don't we? Air conditioned, say amen. amen. Padded pews, good singing, preaching. Uh, <laughs> we'll work on that, right? We got it pretty good. God's been real good to us, amen. amen. But when we walk out those doors, we're challenged with some stuff. There's some difficulties out there. There's some people that are a little bit rude, aren't they? there? There's some challenges. And God is saying, now what are you going to do now? This past week, I have uh, been around people all week long that have been challenged. Had a former staff member that was of a church who was on our staff. His 17-year-old daughter was raped this week. Love your enemies. Come on now. Love, your, love the one that raped your daughter? Now, can we? Sure. Do we? I want to know what it means to be a Christian. I want to know the benefit of what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. So look what it says in verse 6. It says, without faith it is impossible to please him. Y'all good with impossible? <laughs> no other way. Do we want to be God pleasers? Now, he doesn't make it difficult, but he states it. You're not going to be a God pleaser doing it your way. You're going to be a God pleaser if you do it his way. So if we want to be God pleasers, let's just say he's laid it here before us and he says it, it, it's very plain. You must live it by faith. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must believe that God, he is God. And there is no other. But you need to understand that he's the great almighty. You need to understand that he's the God who loves. He's the God who cares. He's the God who can. And that he is a rewarder. In other words, I, I, know, I know God loves preachers, so he's going to do for preaching. Well, hold on. There was a staff member of mine who just went through a minefield this week. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to have an easy way. And you need to be praying a, 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 a hedge of protection around your family. And I pray you're praying, praying a hedge of protection around your pastor and his family and for this church. But, but we're going to take it with us where we go. We're going to go into difficulty. So I need to understand that as I live my life, he is God and he will take care of you. He will reward now, he may not give you what you want, but he'll give you what's best. Oh, no, no. God, it, it can't be best that a girl got raped. <clears throat> God didn't do that. But God will do an amazing work, even in the worst that this world may bring. Some people are not too sure about that. How many of y'all prayed and you didn't get what you wanted? How many of you are happy about that? I'm grateful he didn't give me all the things I prayed for. Amen? I, if, if he had given me all that, that uh, I prayed for when I was young, I wouldn't have my wife. I thought I knew better than him. And I am so grateful that he gave me the one that I needed, not the one at one time, the one I wanted. Y'all hear me? So what's going to what's gonna happen here? Do you know that God will take care of you? And, and this word, diligently seeking him. Are y'all up with diligently seeking him? Sometimes, church, stay with me now. Sometimes when things are easy, we don't diligently seek as much as we should. We're not in the Bible. We're not bowing the knee. We forget. Am I telling the truth? I was with someone and they said, I, uh, I got out of church. I, I, I used to go to church all the time and, and, and I missed and, 
it, it's, 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 it's easy to get in the habit of missing. And I, 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 it was hard to get back. Have y'all ever heard that story? It happens, folks. So he is saying walking by faith is not going to be easy, but that's what you're going to have to do to put a smile on his face. You're not going to just have to say that you believe you're going to have to walk it. Because saying it's easy. Take your Bible, look over in James chapter number 1. It's, just, it's the next book. James chapter number 1. You know this verse. Verse 22. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Doers of the word. Now, let me just be frank. He doesn't say, but be doers of the work, W-O-R-K. Some of you think that you've got to strive your way into heaven. Like it's a competition. He says, be doers of the word. What you know, you're responsible for. To him, to know, to do right. And he does not do it, to him it is sin. But to know to do right, that's the possibility. We are to be doers of the word. You can't just get by with just saying, I'm a Christian. Praise God you're a Christian. What are you doing with your Christianity? He's given us so much and we've settled for so much less. There's so much that we could do, but we don't believe that he could do it with us. There's so much that the, that's horrible in this world, but we have a God who's so much greater. And God's looking to see if the church will allow him to work in, with, and through us. So instead of yelling at the, the roughness and the difficulties and the hardship of the world, look at what God can do when the Word of God comes alive in us. We must be doers of the Word. Look in the next chapter. Verse number 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If they, oh, but I'm a Christian. Well, that's talk. That's talk. I guarantee you, if you went to the people who crucified Jesus and you asked them, are you a believer? They would have said yes. But their actions were something different. So he is saying very plainly here, he says, it, what does it profit if someone says that he believes in God, says that he has faith? What does it profit if he does not have works? Now, here's the word that I think, or two words that I think define this word works, W-O-R-K-S. Y'all ready? Corresponding action. Based upon what you know, what are you doing? So look at verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he does not have corresponding actions in his life? Can faith save him? Can faith alone? Well, faith is actions in your life. It's saying it, it's believing it, and doing it. Look what he says in verse number uh, 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have corresponding actions, is dead. So we are responsible. Come on, church, you're, you're, you're giving me that long look. We are responsible with what we know. We are responsible with what we hear. We are responsible for saying, God, you are good and you are in heaven, and I know that you're God, I know that you can, and I know that because I am your child, you love me. And I know that, that you're waiting for me to pray. You're waiting for me to come. You're waiting for me to put this before you. And I and believe and know that you will reward how we are walking it out. Because I, Lord, don't have it all, but I'm going to be diligently seeking you. Now I'm going to tell you how it's going to come alive. Take your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 16. Jesus, uh, and I, I'm trying not to chase rabbits. I'm trying, to, I know I'm using a lot of scripture, but I'm trying to stay on point. All right. Jesus was talking with his disciples. He had been doing uh, a lot of ministry. 
People have been uh, healed, many great things. But he comes to this place, look what he says in verse number 14. Matthew 16, verse number 14. Verse number, yeah, 13. I'm sorry. Phil, you're smarter than I am. That's not saying much, but you're smarter than I am. <laughs> when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who, what, what, what's everybody saying? So they said, some said John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. There's a lot of people who got an opinion about you, Jesus. He said, all right, but, but who do you say that I am? I, I understand what they're saying. But what is it you're saying? Who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You're the Christ, Son of the living God. You're the Messiah. You're the King. You're the one we've been thinking about. You're the one that, that you're the hope that we've been looking for. You're the one that's going to bring us to God. Now here it is. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Who told him? God did. Say it again. God did. So he asked the question, and the Holy Spirit had impressed on Peter's heart and Peter is speaking out of a revelation from God God had spoke to him God had told him Peter is speaking on that now it's easy when the Bible says love your enemies but we also need that Holy Spirit to say that's the one I'm telling you you need to love and the Holy Spirit will bring up that person. Oh, I wish he'd choose a little differently sometimes. But he picks the, just the right one. He says, that's the one I want you to love on. And then we've got to, isn't it funny how God can, can, can ask us to do the most simple things, but the way that he asks us seem awfully difficult. But that's where he gets glory. Do you love me? Yes, you know, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Well, then love on this one. Now hear this. In your life, if you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're with the Father, you're in the Son, the Holy Spirit is there with you, He is going to come and He's going to challenge you and He's going to call you to do some things and He's going to say, do this. How many times have you had that wonderful idea that you did nothing with? I guarantee you, if I had written down all those things that the Holy Spirit, and he, he tells me those things, and I think, brilliant, wonderful, great. But I didn't write it down. Mark, 10 minutes later, I can't even remember. Because, you see, I really didn't have any intention at all to do it. But in those small things, God gets glory. In those small things, we can put a smile on his face. Janice was talking, gave an example in, in Sunday school of a very easy thing that God led a woman to do. I'm not going to tell the story. It was your story. But a very easy thing God told this woman to do, and she didn't want to do She would have done anything else. It may have seemed hard, but it was a very simple thing. But it was exactly timely at the moment what needed to be done. But because she understood it was God's voice, because she understood that, that it, the God that had spoken to her so many times before, the God who had shared his love in her life so many times before, she said, yes, Lord, and she went and did it, and God did great things. God got great glory from it. Sometimes, church, listen to me, we're looking and we're afraid if we're going to get obedient, he's going to send us to some foreign mission field. Let's just start right here. And we say, well, if I can get prepared, maybe one day. Let's just start with today. Well, if, if I can learn enough, well, let's just start with what you know right now. 
Well, I won't know what to do. Follow your heart. Follow what God's saying in your heart. My brother's a pastor, and he told this story, and it, it meant so much to me because God does the simple. And, and his pastor at that time was a very, very poor man, had, had one suit, and, and they, lived, they just lived very meagerly. But he, he gave his life to serving and ministering to people and was at a, a yard sale and found a past, plastic flower thing. And he bought it and, and took it to my brother's house and gave it to my brother and my sister-in-law. And he said it, it wasn't what he did, but it was that he thought of them, that he cared, and, and that he was being obedient. And he said that those plastic flowers that were worth pocket change meant everything to him. What if the man said, oh, I can't do that. I need to go do something extravagant. I, I just can't do that. Can God bless even if it's not extravagant? Can God use the small things? Can God use anyone? Does God expect all of us to be people of faith? So there's going to be some times God's going to put something on your heart. And you're going to have to decide, are you going to be obedient or not? I know this should be more profound, but it's just that simple. Will we be obedient in hearing the voice from God? Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood hasn't shown this to you. This has come from God. And what I'm asking you to do, please don't come and say, Pastor, what do I need to do? Number one, I, I'm not that smart, right? But I know the one who does. And if he's got your ear, he'll find your heart. How many teenagers need another teenager just to come and put their arm around them? Or not even put their arm around them, just to come and, and invite them or include them. There may be somebody that needs that. You may see somebody and you just need to go encourage them. Oh, I don't want to get into the examples because I'll, I'll miss it. But I know the one who does. What would it be like if every day We were listening, and when we heard to that, that still small voice, we acted upon what he laid on our heart. If every one of us, once a day, what could God do? There will be a revival of love like you've never seen before. People will be asking questions and saying, what in the world is going on at New Holland Baptist Church? And it wouldn't be because the building was bigger. It wouldn't be because they got a new preacher. It wouldn't be because the music's so grand. It wouldn't be that. It would be God's people, Bradley, doing the still small things that he calls us to do. It would be like a tsunami if God would just drop this challenge of faith in this tranquil crowd and we begin to be erupted by saying, Lord, here am I, send me. Here am I, use me. Lord, you have blessed me so very much. I, I could not express my gratitude for all the things that you've done for me. Lord, I simply want to be a child that's obedient and will do quickly what you'd have me to do. Do we trust him enough? In the big or the small? 
What if we can't afford it? He can. What if you're old? Talk to Abraham. I think he's got the records. Have children at that age. Anybody want to be 100 years old and starting over? I guarantee there's some no's in this room. Mine included. But yet, look what God did. Yeah, God might call you to build an ark. Well, that doesn't mean go buy a bass boat. Just go do whatever God calls you to do. I'm looking for that revival in my own life. Can I confess to you? It's just us. Is that all right? I blow it off way too often. I'll hear something, and I'll say, no big deal. Or I'll procrastinate. Do, do y'all ever procrastinate? I'll get around to it. I'll do it later. And the opportunity's gone. What if God was actually working in someone's life and God brought me uniquely right there that I could do some small thing that he could get great glory out of, but I was too busy because I was going to do something else. Faith is acting on the word of God. You hear the word of God, you know the word of God, and you act upon it. Trust the voice and do it. Today's just the introduction. We're going to look at 10 unique circumstances, and I guarantee you, somewhere in this 10 weeks, you're going to get hit. I'm going to, I've, in my life, I've been hit by every one of them. Sermons are usually hallelujah or oh me. I've hit the oh me's over and over and over again. But I'm so looking forward to seeing what God does. You see, because this is what I'm hoping for, Brother Mark. I'm hoping for in the next 10 weeks hearing testimonies of people who are listening to God, obeying Him, and what God's done in their life. That's what I'm looking forward to. I want, it, I want a fresh aroma of God's people being obedient. Y'all are some sweet, sweet people. You really are. I, I tell you, I, I, Jill had surgery this week, and I saw Johnny up there, and I said, that is a good guy. Johnny, I just love you to death. You are, you are sharp. This church is filled with those type people. And it's like God said, I want to turn them loose. Now here, God's going to start challenging. God's going to start speaking. And you're going to know it's him. The question is, when he does, will you say yes? Will you say yes? You will be a God pleaser. If you make up your mind now, first time he speaks, the answer is yes. Don't wait till then. Because when you wait till then he speaks, then you're, then you're going to have to weigh it out. Well, I don't you know. Make up your mind now. Make up your mind now that when he speaks and you know it's him, and, and it didn't, really doesn't matter what he asks you to do, he's the boss. We just do what he asks us to do. We, we give him a great big, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here am I. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it be great every day? Let's pray. Father, speak as only you can. Call us to yourself. Thank you for sending Jesus to make a way. Lord, if there's anyone in this house today that does not know you as Savior and Lord, the first thing that he's calling them to, I know it. Lord, you make it real in their life. They need to be saved. They need to give their heart and life to you. Lord, they need to come to that place and they, they need to, to know that they have sinned. 
And Lord Jesus, that know that you have left heaven to come here to pay for their sins on the cross of Calvary. Lord, that you gave your life, that you were buried, and that you were resurrected again. And Lord, if they would just trust and by, by faith ask you to save them, forgive them of their sins. Lord, that you would accept the repentance and save them. Father, that's the first step of faith that all of us must take. So Lord, extend that invitation right now. Lord, powerfully speak to their heart and say to them right now, it's you he's talking about. I want to save you. But if you're in this place today and you are already a Christian, God may be saying to you, I want to challenge you. Do you love me? Do you believe me? Will you obey me? Do you love me enough to walk by faith? Father, speak to hearts as only you can. Do an amazing work in us. Lord, I pray that right now the answer is yes. Holy Spirit, give the invitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.